In this video, I will help you solve your Google Merchant Center misrepresentation error. I've created a checklist with my five years of e-commerce knowledge, how we always solve this issue for our Google Ads clients. We always use this checklist to find and solve the problem as fast as possible. And this is the first time I'm going to release this checklist publicly, so you can directly benefit from it. I will do my best to keep this checklist as up to date as possible with the newest Google Merchant Center policies. Our agency is 95% successful with this checklist solving the misrepresentation error in Google Merchant Center. You can duplicate this checklist directly in your own Google Drive so you can edit and tweak it according your needs. Therefore, the things in this checklist are super important for the Merchant Center algorithm. They will check your website every day to see if all things in the checklist are there. All right, so there we are in the checklist. Uh, this is the checklist to unlock your Merchant Center from the Google misrepresentation. It's a pretty long one and you get it if you go to the link in the description. So when you go to the link in the description, you will end up on the page like this. Uh, you simply fill in your name and your email address. Then you will end directly in my knowledge center, which looks like this. And here you can find the, uh, this blog article, right, that I wrote. So if you click on there, you can go, into, you go to this page and then you find the checklist right over here. So when you click on this link, you will end up in the uh, spreadsheet like this. And this is 95% secure, the way to solve your misrepresentation. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the checklist. So uh, all the things in the checklist here comes by different topics and I will explain it one by one. So first of all, we go for the general checks. The general text first of all contains uh, the business email validation. So you click on the link, uh, then you end up here for the uh, email validation. You enter your email and you check if everything is all right there. If it's not all right, you need to check your email. If it says uh, green valid, then you can go to the next check. We come back to the sheet. Uh, you check for the dead link checker. So uh, Google only wants that the customers or the visitors on your website have the best possible experience. So we also need to check if they cannot end up on a broken link. So we end, uh, uh, do that here with this free tool. Like all tools that I mentioned here are free and easy to use. You can simply copy and paste your URL right here and check if you have any broken links. If you find a few of them, make sure to fix them and go to the next step. The next step is to go to the PageSpeed uh, web development uh, from Google. Uh, you check that right here. You fill in your URL and you analyze if your website is up to date with the speed. And if because Google can also uh, give you errors if the website speed is not optimal. Because I just said they want to give people the, a good experience. So a nice loading and fast website is essential right here, right? So if you go to the next one, the last check you need to do on a different platform is to go to the website URL right here. It's to check your virus. So you need to make sure you don't have any uh, virus on your website or malware. So you implement your URL right here to scan if you have any uh, malware on your website. If not, you can simply come back to the spreadsheet and, f and go to the next one. So after that, you need to check if you have an HTTPS certificate. So the way you do that is go to the URL here and check if HTTPS is enabled. If you don't have it, it means sometimes you don't have a secure connection. So please check that and it's important for the Google guidelines. And then you need to check the SSL certification as well. You do that by clicking here. Uh, in any other browser, it's quite different. So you need to make sure that you have a lock here. And my lock is here in the Brave browser. So that one is secured as well. Uh, then brings us to the next point. The email must be a business uh, email, right? It's not allowed to do a business on a personal Gmail. So make sure you have a, G, uh, a business Gmail of another email there with your domain name, but a personal Gmail is not allowed. Uh, that brings us to the next point. A phone number is optional but highly recommended because the more contact options you have on your website, the more trustworthy you are for customers to contact you, right? So the phone number is optional, optional but is not always recommended. All right, the next point is the business address. This one is a really important one. I'll make myself a bit smaller. So the business uh, information one is really important. You need to have it <coughs> specifically in this order. The street plus the number here, a comma, city, comma, area, state or province, comma, zip code 
Coma Country because um, the way the Merchant Center algorithm reach your website every day is in this order. This is the exact order that the Merchant Center uh, save your business information in the dashboard and therefore it's highly highly recommended to keep it in this order. So you just remove the brackets and fill in the details that are essential for you. So the next one the next one is the physical shop. So it's always optional uh, to do the Google My Business location if you have a physical shop right there. Because if Google Merchant Center detects your address from your website and you have it uh, visible on Google My Business, there's a higher chance that you get your Merchant Center unlocked for misrepresentation. All right, therefore it's also really important on your website to have at least a main menu on the top and a footer menu uh, at the bottom of your website with all necessary uh, elements, which I'm going to explain you in a minute as well. And then we have three uh, really important durations what we need to do for your, for your service, and that is transit duration. So how long does it take for you to transit the package? So from an order before shipment is the transit time, and you need to have the specific days on your website uh, how long it takes. Therefore, that brings me to the next point, and that is shipping duration. So after the transit time, you have the shipping duration from fulfilling the uh, package until the delivery of the package. That is the shipping time, and you need to have that specific number or range on your website because you need to uh, fill in the same details in Merchant Center, and they actually detect if you have the same information on your website. Uh, and that brings me to the last one. The also a really important one is the return policy. So if you offer 14 or 13 days guarantee for your return policy, you need to mention that as well on your merchant center, as well as on your website. And then brings me to the last point from the general checks. The last point is the payment options. So if you have the payment options available in your checkout, you need to uh, order them in the sheet right here. So let's say we have Visa, MasterCard, Maestro, American Express, Ideal and Klarna for local European payment methods. You can order them and you need to uh, use them later on in your uh, payment policy page. So make sure you include them, and them there and check which one you have in your checkout uh, and make sure you have them in the right order on your uh, payment policy page. All right, that brings us to the next chapter in the checklist uh, for the Merchant Center. Uh, you have here the website header contains. So a website header is basically the menu at the top of your website. And here are a few suggestions that you need to have to look trustworthy for the Google Merchant Center algorithm. So it's highly recommended to put your uh, homepage uh, in your main menu, in your header menu. Uh, you put all products page in there so people can easily navigate to a category page or an all product page. You can uh, implement an about us page. Uh, this one is optional but highly recommended because the more information you have about your business, the more the merchant center trusts your website, right? So you have the contact page which is highly uh, essential to have there in the header menu and you have a track your order page. So this track your order page is also optional but highly recommended because it builds extra trust for as well as Google as the visitors on your website. So these are the five essential ones uh, that you uh, can implement in your uh, header menu. And the uh, uh, next chapter is about website products. So it's basically that you don't sell any products that are against the policies of Google, right? So any illegal m medicines or drugs or any other things are not allowed. And I think you can uh, guess by yourself what's allowed and what not. But sometimes we get people that try to sell products against the policies. So make sure you check that out. I will link, uh, I will implement the link right here as well. All right, that brings me to the next point. And the next point is website pages. So there are a few essential uh, page requirements that I'm going to explain you right here. So first of all, about the contact page, right? How can people on your website, the visitors can contact you in multiple different ways on the contact page. And you have a few requirements that we uh, saw by unlocking preview stores uh, that are required by the algorithm and gets picked up. So first of all, on the contact page, you need to have at least two contact options. So you can even have your address and your email or a contact field and the email, but you always need two options uh, and a phone number counts as well. So you can also have an email uh, and a phone number or a phone number and a contact field uh, there. So make sure you have at least two options there as option. 
Uh, then you need to have the business address again on the contact page. It's highly recommended to do it there because the algorithm picks it up from the contact page uh, and especially in the same order as I explained before, which you can copy and paste by now. So if you go to the link in the, sh in the page here on my no free knowledge center, you can duplicate this uh, sheet and you can fill in the uh, address information exactly how you want it and how you can implement it on your own website by copy and pasting from this checklist, right? Uh, what's also really important and essential, essential in the checklist is the customer service availability. So when are you going to respond if people send you a message, right? It's really important to know if people send you a message. So uh, you can just copy and paste this template or translate it to your own language. Our customer service available from Monday to Friday, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., right? So make sure you include that on the contact page as well to keep things clear and transparent for your customers. Uh, and also for the FAQ, so if you have an FAQ, uh, frequently asked questions uh, on your contact page, make sure they are the same as any other page where you implement the FAQ. Because sometimes we see that people implement different information on the FAQ on the contact page compared to other FAQ pages, right? But if you mention any duration of transit time, shipping time or return times, make sure they are synchronized with the FAQ there as well. All right, that brings us to the next page is the privacy policy. So make sure you include all relevant cookies and tracking software that you uh, implemented for Google, Facebook, Meta, whatever uh, you have there. Make sure you make uh, them a note in the privacy policy. Uh, maybe you can translate something with ChatGTP and make it work there, but make sure you have all everything in the privacy policy page. Also, you need to implement the email address and contact details. So if people on your website have any questions about your privacy policy, they can directly see on this page what your email is to contact you and your business address. So we see more success by unlocking uh, stores that have a company address and email on every legal page. So that's why I included in all pages right here. All right, the next one is the shipping policy. So what is really important in the shipping policy page is that you mention the transit time and the shipping time. So in Merchant Center, you need to uh, select the transit time as well. So let's say the transit time is between zero and three days. You need to mention these words as keywords, transit time, zero to three days on your shipping policy page. And the same goes for your shipping time. So if you say your shipping time is between three and seven days, make sure you implement that on your shipping page as well as in your Merchant Center dashboard, right? So Google wants transparency, so please, please provided to them by giving them exactly the information as you implement it in your merchant center, right? And then again, you implement the email address and the contact details for question. Uh, so you can basically copy and paste the template uh, I implemented here at the bottom. So you can just implement this, uh, download the sheet, implement all information and copy and paste this everything on the policy pages. All right, that brings me to the next page and that is the return policy. Also here, people need to uh, feel confident ordering from you and that comes with the return service, right? So make sure that you uh, uh, notify all uh, requirements on the return policy. Uh, you can uh, tell the return time here. So um, you also need to explain exactly like it doesn't matter if the return time is 14 or 30 days or whatever. So you need to make sure that it's written that the people receive the package. So the start time is not when the package is shipped. It's when the customer uh, from you receive the package at the door. The other thing you need to mention is that the, uh, that you uh, charge any cost if the return uh, is broken or not uh, if it's of, if the customer is not satisfied. So uh, when people get your package and it's broken or they are not satisfied, are you going to charge them for it? And what is the shipping cost? So make sure you implement that in your return policy as well to keep everything transparent for the visitor that come from Google on your website, right? And you also, as uh, as I mentioned on the two other policies, make sure you copy and paste the template to uh, have co contact options on your return policy as well. All right, the next one is the payment policy. As I just mentioned, you need to mention exactly the same payment options that you have in your checkout as well as on the payment policy page, right? So you can copy and paste what you fill in in the sheet uh, previously and you can just uh, make it work from there, right? So you uh, implement only that information uh, that people can pay with uh, your options that you have available in checkout and you can implement the contact address uh, from the company and the email address right there as well. 
and then uh, we go to the terms of service so uh, with the terms of service you have any regular template will do the job but you need a few tweaks to make it work so uh, highly recommended here as optional is that you link your page for privacy policy uh, shipping policy return policy and payment policy so the more trust you have here on the terms of service link to other pages the more the chance is higher than that you unlock your merchant center right here so uh, and also again fill in the template for the contact details also on your terms and service all right that brings me to the uh, next page track your order so this one is optional but highly recommended make sure you have the contact information there as well so you implement this track your order page in the header menu and in the footer menu uh, so you can have extra transparency there and the last but not least is the checkout page you need to check the checkout page in your funnel if everything is working properly right so if the payment methods are available and working properly and if the page itself is working properly with the right products the VAT amount there the total amount uh, if you have any discount that is working there because merchant centers algorithm is checking your website every day if uh, there are any errors in the checkout right because it's a critical page on the funnel so they will check it every day and make sure that people from google don't end up in a broken checkout page so make sure you check it out all these policy pages are really important and make sure you link all of them also in your footer menu so without further ado let's go to the next page what pages you need to include in your uh, website footer menu so when it comes down to the footer on your website here are the essentials that you need to implement right there and are uh, almost essential or highly recommended to do so we have seen the biggest success of the people that are implementing this information so let me explain it to you right here so first of all you need to link the privacy uh, policy the shipping policy the return policy and the payment policy and the terms of service all in your footer menu so with one click of a button people can go right to all policies that they need to have the required information from your website right so it's important that all of these pages work click on all of them to see that all links are working and there are no broken links right then you need to implement also the contact us page uh, right there with the two uh, optional contact options uh, i mean and then you also need to uh, tell the people like okay and what times are you available so it's highly recommended to copy the same template as i just said from 9 a.m to 5 p.m there the, for the customer service availability uh, it's highly recommended to do, uh, implement the about us page there as well for the extra trust you can implement the track your order page there as well you can implement the company name and logo uh, it's uh, uh, optional but highly recommended to implement this as well the FAQ page is also recommended to implement in your footer menu. Uh, the social media profile, so let's say you have a Meta, TikTok or Instagram profile for your business or website. It's optional but recommended because again it builds extra trust for Merchant Center and therefore for your business. Uh, and also it's optional but highly recommended to implement the payment method uh, icons right there in the footer. So these are needs to be the same uh, icons as you uh, have in the checkout available. So make sure you double check that right there as well. All right, that brings me to the next important part what you need to implement on your website or at least need to pay attention to, right? So these are the website checks. Uh, first of all, you need to have the legal pages added on your website, as I mentioned in the previous topics as well. And also in the checkout, make sure in the checkout you have at least terms and service, privacy policy and shipping policy mentioned so people have transparency and check what uh, they sign up to, right? If they buy from you. Any other also important thing is, right, don't do any fake trust. I see so many people getting a misrepresentation error that have fake reviews on their website, fake newspapers, or any other fake trust pilot stars or any other platform where they uh, normally do reviews. They fake it all and then they come to me and say like, Robin, I have misrepresentation. And that's the first thing what I see, right? So make sure you don't be one of them. Don't add any fake trust elements. Reviews are okay, but Google Merchant Center scan your, scans your website every day. So uh, if you have uh, zero reviews in day one and next the next day you have 100 reviews, it's pretty suspicious that you do anything weird on the back end. So make sure you don't fall in that category of fake trust. Also, don't mention any things like fake tax or no tax. 
So you need to have the tax set up right in your website and uh, don't mention any no tax because that's really a no-go for Google and they will give you a misrepresentation straight away. It doesn't matter if it's in a photo or any text on your website, they will detect this kind of text and they will make sure that your uh, products cannot be advertised on Google, right? So make sure you uh, leave that kind of things. And also one small thing what I mentioned here, but it's actually pretty big, is don't have any uh, over-promising statements. So if you are in the healthcare niche or something like this, that it's uh, really important to not make statements be with before and after results that are not allowed and not possible at all. So if you try to cure any disease or any other illness or uh, weight loss or anything like that, if you do over-promising uh, things on your website, Google with, will detect that with their language detector and you will get a misrepresentation because it's simply not allowed to lie to the people with fake before and after results, right? Uh, the other important things here are the merchant center essentials. Uh, these are a few basics that you need to implement in your merchant center uh, account. Um, the first one is the domain name claimed and a verified uh, as well. So you make sure that you are the owner uh, of the domain name and claim it in the merchant center. It takes like five minutes or less, so make sure to do that. Uh, make sure your shipping policies uh, are implemented in the Google Merchant Center as well. Uh, your return policies are correct with the same time as I mentioned in the uh, return policies above. So if you mention 14 days in Merchant Center, please also mention 14 days in the policies right here. So make sure that's all aligned because they will check it every day. Uh, and also the business information. So make sure you have exactly the same business information in your merchant center as on your website because it needs to be 100% synchronized in order to not give you any misrepresentation error. Also, any other important things here, what you need to pay extra attention to, like I have five years of e-commerce knowledge and I keep updating this checklist. So make sure you check it out quite often if you face this issue. And a few things that I saw going wrong recently are, uh, for example, here, if you mention your email address, don't include any dot behind the dot com or dot nl or any other uh, extension you have. Otherwise, they cannot recognize the email. So don't add any dot uh, after your email address. Uh, also, it's nice to implement a contact page URL uh, to your uh, legal pages, right? So you can easily copy and paste it right here. And I also implement it here for the contact from template. So make sure you do the HTTPS contact link to your contact page and implement it on uh, all privacy uh, related and uh, legal pages. So uh, do you make sure you do so. And to build extra trust, you can connect your Merchant Center account to your Google Ads account and add the same business information there and add the payment method. So it verifies extra that you are the owner of this setup and uh, take full responsibility with your payment method there as well. So you can do that by uh, doing this method. And also you can uh, check, double check this one. So if you have any business name uh, in your logo, so it's only a logo uh, that they mention a name, you can also try to uh, swap your current business company name with this name on your logo. So let's say uh, your website is test.nl, uh, in your logo, it says test.nl. You can also implement test.nl as a company name in the merchant center. So these are some uh, extra elements that I saw success with by unlocking multiple merchant centers right here. I also implemented my template, as I m mentioned previously. You co uh, can uh, go to this uh, checklist. You implement all details for your company and you can copy and paste this to all your legal pages and in the footer. So make sure you do so. And then the last but not least, if you reply for a review uh, in the Merchant Center, don't do it directly in the Merchant Center, but go to this link. In this link, you can add extra information uh, if you want to uh, apply for a new uh, revision for your Merchant Center misrepresentation error. So if you go here, you can add extra information such as things what you changed or extra information what you add. So you make it more reliable than just hit the bottom of review in the Merchant Center because there you don't have any issues or sorry, you don't have any options uh, for applying or adding ad extra information, but you gain extra credibility if you add everything what you uh, fixed on your website and you mention it on this page, right? So make sure you go to my checklist right here and click on the link to apply for new review if everything is done right here. All right, guys, and that wraps up how you can 
check exactly how you can solve the merchant center error misrepresentation with my checklist. My name is Robin, I have five years of e-commerce knowledge and I run an online marketing agency where we help you scale your Google Ads. And therefore I also make this video because if you solve your merchant center misrepresentation error, you're able to uh, scale on Google Ads and get extra re revenue from there. So if you like this video, make sure you put the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can make more videos like this. And if you find this video valuable, make sure you check out my free knowledge center where I apply many more information what you exactly need to succeed in e-commerce as well as for dropshipping as well as for branding. All right, my name is Robin and I see you in the next video. Ciao.